Hey traders, this is going to be a quick recap. I haven't had a lot of free time this weekend to put this video together, so I'm going to kind of run through this quickly and I may do another video midweek to give some more details about how I'm going to manage some of these trades, especially the Amazon trade that is a spread that I rolled on Friday. So I'm going to give some more specifics about that just because I've had a few questions about rolling spreads. So I'll try to cover that maybe um, later this week in another video. I just don't have time to really go through that right now. So let's go through the trades real quickly. The first one was Peloton. That was the only trade I had put on the week before on 9-11. And I was able to close it out after a couple trading days. I got a credit of $1.28 and closed it for $0.13. Cents, and that gave me a profit of $460. I only did four contracts for that one. And then on 9.15, after I closed that one out, I did put on an Amazon spread. I sold the 30.80, 30.75 put credit spread expiring on 9.18. I ended up having to roll that because Amazon dropped significantly below my strike prices, but I got a really good roll. I was able to roll it down to the 30.10, 3,000 strike prices. I had to widen the spread. So before it was a five point wide spread. Now it is a 10 point wide spread. And I got a two cent credit for that roll. So you can see right now, I would lose about $2,900 if I were to close this spread out. Chewy was another trade I put on on 9.15. I sold the 52 strike and got a 78 cent credit. I held it until Friday and Friday it was trading all over the place. I was wondering if I was even gonna be able to close it out for a profit, but luckily I was able to close it out for 21 cents. And actually if I would have just waited until the end of the day, I would have been able to close it out for a penny. But I ended up still getting a 57 cent profit. I had seven contracts and that was a $399 total profit. The rest of my trades are trades that I've been rolling. So AMD, I've been able to roll it down from the 81 down to the 76.5 strike price. So I've been getting some really good rolls for that one. I rolled it this week and got a one cent credit. You can see right now if I were to close this out, I would lose about $945. Match, I started at the 110 strike and got it down to the 105 strike. When I rolled it this week, I got a six cent credit. And right now I could actually close it for 70 or a loss of $78. So I got a really good roll on match. And actually if I'd have just waited and held on to match instead of rolling it, I could have let it expire this week because it did close above the 108 strike price, but that's okay. I'm still in a pretty good position on that one. RKT is one that I had sold a few weeks ago, sold the 25 strike for earnings play. I rolled it down to the 24.5 strike for next week. I had to pay a debit for this one. I had to pay 10 cents to roll it. And I was okay paying that debit just because I got such a big credit to begin with. Normally I only roll if I can get a credit, but I decided to spend the 10 cents just to get it down to the 24.5 strike. Right now, if I close it, I would lose about $1,300. Apple, I started at the 126.25 and I've got it down to the 123.75. When I rolled it this week, I couldn't lower the strike price because Apple's dropped so much below my strike that it's hard to lower the strike price and still get a credit. So I kept it at the same strike and got a credit of 14 cents. Right now I would lose about $9,400 if I were to close Apple out. I'm okay holding on to Apple. I mean, it could still drop another 10% or more and I'm okay with that. I'm okay riding it out and waiting for Apple to recover so that I do not have to realize that loss. Right now I have the buying power to be able to hold on to the position. Etsy, I started the 123 strike and I've got it down to the 112 strike. So I've gotten some really good rolls on this one as well. So when I rolled it this week to the 112, I got a one cent credit. Right now I could close Etsy out and I would lose about $1,000. So I'm hoping this week that I'll definitely be able to get a match, which is taking up a good portion of my buying power. And Etsy's taking up about the same amount of my buying power. Uh, so hopefully I may be able to get out of this one as well. Etsy's right around my strike price. So if I can close out Etsy and match this week, that's gonna free up a ton of my buying power to where I'd only be using about 50% of my buying power. And so that would give me enough to hold on to Apple, even if it did continue to drop and be able to wait it out. Even if I have to wait for a few months for it to recover, I'd rather do that than take the $9,000 loss. So in total, out of the two trades that I was closed this week, I had a total profit of $859. And right now I've got that unrealized loss of a total of 15,756. Last week it was around 14,000. So it's dropped another $1,500 or so. But again, I'm okay with having to hold and waiting it out so they don't have to realize this loss. You know, if we go back and look at the video that I made in 2018 showing my 2017 results, you can see in this video, I showed a graph of my total cumulative percent return for that year. And if you notice, right around week 27, I had a pretty big drop off in my percent return. 
And this is a scenario where I wasn't taking these losses. These were unrealized losses where I'm having to roll positions that have gone in the money. And you can see it was a pretty big drop off. I mean, I was up probably about 150% at the high and it dropped all the way down to where I was up only about 90%. So it was a pretty big drop off in my total annualized return. But you can see I stuck with it and it took it probably another good three months before it ever came back up to the level it was at before it dropped. And then it continued going up for the rest of the year. So during this period, this three month period, I was essentially rolling and probably not even being able to put on any new positions. I was just waiting it out for these stocks to recover and go back up to where they were before they started dropping. So similarly, I'm doing the same thing here. I have enough buying power right now. Right now I'm using about 90% of my buying power. So I'm still using a good bit of my buying power. But like I said, if I can free up Match and Etsy, that's going to relieve a lot of that buying power that I'm using and put me down around 50% where I can afford to roll Apple for a few months if I need to, waiting for it to recover. Now, the downside is during that time period, I'm not able to really put on any new trades. I'm able to put on, say, one or two trades at the most while I'm waiting for Apple to recover. But that's okay because I already made so much money this year. I'm already up 100% just in the last four months if, that if I can't really put on any new trades for the end of the year, and I'm having to wait for Apple to recover, and Apple does recover, say, by the end of the year, then I'm fine with my returns for this year. I've already pretty much made my targets for the year anyway, so if I can't make additional profit for the next three months, I'm okay with that. So after saying that, I know that's going to prompt the question of how will my alert service work if I'm not taking any trades for the next few months because I'm having to roll my Apple. And so I would say two things. One, it still gives you the visibility into how I'm managing my trades. Even if I'm not putting on many trades during that time period, you're still able to see how I'm actually rolling the trades and how I'm handling my buying power. But in addition to that, I still plan on giving trade alerts, even if it's trades that I'm not specifically taking. I'll still give some trade ideas for those who are maybe not using as much buying power as I am and still have buying power available to place a new trade. So I still want to be able to give you guys stocks to consider selling puts on, even if I personally can't enter those positions myself. So you don't have to worry about that situation where you're paying for an alert service and basically every alert is that I'm rolling Apple every week. I'll still be giving some alerts for you guys to take action on if you have the available buying power to do so. And speaking of alerts, I've gotten a few questions asking me when do I anticipate that going live. It's taking me longer than I anticipated, just trying to get everything finalized. So hopefully maybe by the end of the month, here in the next couple of weeks, I can get that ready and you guys can uh, start signing up for that. So anyway, that's all I got for this week. Like I said, I'll try to make another video uh, maybe midweek going into some more details on how I'm managing these trades and specifically around rolling credit spreads. Thanks.